Hello there, everyone. My name is Nathan Birch, and in this video, we're kind of we're going to talk a little bit about week one and what to expect for this week. So, uh, if you go into iLearn, you will see you will see something very similar to this with our with our week one. Okay, you have a, a few things right here. Now, from here on out, I'm kind of just going to go to our um, online course content where it's hosted. Okay, uh, if if you go to this link, then you can see where all of our course content is. And I can click on lesson one <clears throat> and see exactly what we're going to do for the week um, and everything that I have to do. Okay. And then here in iLearn, if I click on the team activity for week one, it is pretty empty. It basically just has a link to uh, this guy right here, the lesson one team activity. And then you can go back and you take that quiz once you've finished it. All right. Uh, so with that said, I'm going to go to lesson one. Okay, uh, in this week, we are going to set up our development environment and all the accounts that we need for the entire semester. So after this week, you should be good to go. You won't have to download anything else um, or make any new accounts. Okay, we're gonna learn what Node.js is. We're gonna set up and run a Node server. Uh, we'll have a little bit of a JavaScript refresher that is optional. Intro to parsing requests. Uh, we'll talk about modular programming, NPM packages, so earlier when I said you won't install anything else the rest of the semester, that's kind of false. You will install node packages, um, but it's really easy to install them. Uh, we'll talk about finding errors, both logical and syntax errors, and then using the debugger with the NodeMon expansion, okay? So let's just kind of go through each one of these things real quick so that you guys just have a basic feel of, of what's going on in this, in this first week, okay? Uh, outside of this, the only other thing that there is is the icebreaker discussion that will take place in Microsoft Teams. So um, just don't forget to post your introduction there uh, with whatever was invited of you to post um, and, and then comment on a couple of your peers' posts as well just so we can all get to know each other. Uh, computer setup and account creation. So uh, we need to download Visual Studio Code, Slack, uh, that'll be Teams, um, Microsoft Teams, GitHub, and Heroku. Okay, um, so Visual Studio Code is going to be the text editor that we're going to use. If you want to use something else, that's totally cool. It's like me saying that you can't use Microsoft Word because I'm going to use Google Docs. You can use whatever you want. Um, it's just a text editor. Okay, uh, Microsoft Teams, that's what we're going to use for our course communication and collaboration. GitHub, you're not going to download. Okay, uh, GitHub is a hosting website. All right, you are gonna have to download Git though, and we'll talk about that, that here in a sec. And then Heroku also, we're not gonna download that. Um, Heroku is uh, a cloud computing service that will actually host our websites, okay? Uh, Visual Studio Code, you can download and install it from here. Uh, and there are, I would recommend taking a little bit of time, just go to YouTube and type in VS Code tips or tricks or cool expansions or, or extensions. Um, cause visual studio code can do a lot of amazing things. And so if you're not familiar with the tool, um, taking a few minutes up front could save you a few hours later. So, uh, Microsoft teams, uh, again, this will be updated, uh, but I would encourage you to download it on your devices so that you get notifications. GitHub is essentially a big database of source code for people all around the world. Uh, technically you can upload any type of file here. You know, if I wanted to store all of my English papers here, I could, um, but GitHub's really nice too because it shows versions. So anytime I change a file, it'll show up in GitHub. Um, so go ahead and, and install Git on your computer after downloading it. Um, and then I would also recommend that you do something very similar to what you did with VS Code uh, to watch a video or two on, on getting started with Git if you've never used it before. Um, go through a couple of things just to make sure Git version, that'll just make sure that you have Git installed on your computer. Uh, create a new repository. So when you make a new repository, you'll, you'll actually go to github.com to do that. Um, and so let me actually just open up GitHub real quick and I'll show you guys what it looks like. Okay, now I'm already logged in. I have a bunch of repositories over here. Uh, if I click on this plus button though, I can, I can say new repository and I can name this whatever I want. Okay, if you want to name it like CSE 341, or something, you totally could. It says this is available because this is in my space. All right, um, but once you make that repository, if you make it private, you'll just have to add your instructor um, to it or, or a TA if a TA will be grading your work. 
um, or you can make it public. Public can be really nice because then if you're talking with potential employers and they're like, hey, can I see something you've done? You can be like, yeah, check this out. Um, and then you can, you can create your repository there. Uh, let's see here. Some other stuff on here. Okay, this is really important. Uh, open a folder in VS Code. Uh, by doing that, uh, you'll have all of your code for the class in, in one really nice spot. So let me just open up my Visual Studio Code right here and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So uh, here's VS Code. And if I click on this uh, Explorer right here, you can see I have a bunch of files right here. Makes it really easy to navigate. And all I did to do this was I opened up a folder on my computer. This folder is just on my C drive called Git. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, I have a bunch of class content here for different classes that I teach. But CSE 341, I have my repositories in here uh, for, for this. You know, so my CSE 341 project, I have my node project right here. Okay, um, so open a folder. It's really easy, just click, click on file, open folder, and wherever you're gonna put your CSE 341 code in this class. Uh, it goes through how to connect your repository that you made on GitHub to your computer. Okay, you'll do git clone, whatever that URL is after you create the repository. And that's it, okay? Uh, Heroku, you go to Heroku, click the sign up link. Uh, you will use the free account. You know, you don't have to pay for anything here. Um, and that is all you have to do this week for Heroku, okay? So that was our setup. Uh, let's go into the reading. So every week your readings are gonna look really similar, okay? So the getting started with the online course, this is an Academine course and you'll go through and watch all these videos. Now, I encourage you wholeheartedly to program alongside. So I didn't write this code, well, I did write it, but I was following along with the, with the Academine course. Um, and it, it's huge because if you do this, then you'll have all this amazing code on your computer that you wrote, that you learned about, um, that you can use in, in personal projects, okay? And that can help you. Uh, for most weeks, you'll just have something like this for your readings, okay? where it says what videos you should watch in the in the Academy course, okay? And then I give a rough estimate of how many hours, how much time that is, okay? Now that's just video time. Uh, it might be half again as much or maybe even double. Um, again, as a three credit cor course, we're shooting a nine to 12 hours of work. If you code alongside these videos, then, then you'll only take like an hour on your team activity and your proof assignment will pretty much be done, okay? Um, and then here's just a screenshot from, from what that course looks like. Okay. All right. Let's look at our team activity for the week. <clears throat> um, so the team activity, you'll just download a zip file of the class template. If you want to fork it, do a git fork. That's, that's fine too. Uh, this is a GitHub repository with a bunch of code that will kind of be your template to start with. Okay. Now this might be a little bit confusing at first because you're going to have two projects. All right, this has a lot more code than the Academine course does. The Academine course starts at absolutely nothing. So you'll have this repository and then the other repository that you just made uh, where you put your Academine course content, okay? And then later on in the, in the semester when you work on your big final projects, you'll make another repository, okay? Um, some good things, you'll learn about these things as you go through the reading. So these won't be a surprise when you get here for the team activity. Uh, and then some questions to answer while you look through this, this template repository that you've just downloaded. Okay, GitLens is a great extension for, for VS Code, um, but if you wanna use the terminal, here are some helpful commands for working with Git, okay? This, um, uh, this uh, Git add, commit, and push, you're gonna do nonstop this semester. All right, and last but not least, let's look at your prove assignment. After completing the assigned reading, and your team activity, you're prepared to do your prove assignment. And here's the assignment, okay? Uh, every single one of your assignments will have a little rubric down here to say, in, to kind of give you an idea of, of what you're being graded on, which is helpful. Uh, and if you have any questions on this, I would encourage you to post on Microsoft Teams so that other students can see your questions, answer your questions, um, and when teachers chime in, everyone can see that as well, so. Uh, that is a little bit of what to expect for this week. I hope you guys have an awesome week and good luck learning Node.